I'm Katie and this is a video about how to run a grow sprint with your team. I'm going to be walking you through the process step by step and demystifying some of the secrets of how to make it really, really successful. You can take uh, screenshots as you go through of all of the slides you'll see on screen and there'll be places to pause the video so you can run it live in the room. If you're planning on facilitating a grow sprint with your team, you might want to watch this all the way through first before getting them together in the room. So to get the ball rolling, it's important to have a brief introduction to the process, some of the terminology and what to expect. The Growth Sprint is a process that we developed at Form in order to help our clients go further faster and create alignment in their teams. If you want to go deeper on any of the concepts, then the two books that you need to be picking up are Sprint by Jake Knapp and Hacking Growth by Sean Ellis. So now let's look at the kit you need to get started. And don't worry, it's all stuff you probably have in the office or at home. So first, obviously you need yourself and a team. Six to eight people is definitely the sweet spot, but you can run it with less uh, if you want to. Then the equipment you'll need is yellow and blue square post-its, yellow rectangular post-its, a blank wall or a whiteboard, Sharpies, red dot stickers and green dot stickers, and a stack of white A4 paper. Obviously, good snacks are a benchmark for any successful workshop, so make sure you've got plenty of those on hand. And finally, an amazing sprint playlist to set the right mood. You can check out ours that we've made in the link in the description below. So now you've got your kit together, we need to assign some roles to make this process really smooth. You've got three key roles in the process. Uh, you've got your facilitator, you've got your decider, and then you've got the rest of you which will be participants. So let's break those down and explain them in a bit more detail. Your facilitator is ultimately the person that's going to guide you through these exercises, keep you on track with timing, and also is the person that's really happy to scribe through some of the exercises. Your decider is usually the most senior person in the room. This person now and again is going to be given essentially a golden vote so that you can move through the exercises at speed because this growth sprint is all about allowing you to get to really solid outcomes quickly. And then finally, the rest of you are going to be participants and you'll be joining in with the exercises and giving all of your ideas. So first, pick your facilitator if that's not already obvious. Then you want to pick and make sure you know who your decider is. And the rest of you are participants. Right, so now you're armed with your pens, your post-its and your positions, it's time to get that terminology on lock. Sometimes you're going to hear me explain exercises as together alone. And this is really simple. All it means is keep your ideas to your post-its and to yourself no talking. This is how we move at speed through the exercises. And don't worry, there'll be plenty of opportunities to share your ideas with your wider team members. But we've all been in those meetings that just become a complete talking shop and the growth sprint just isn't that. So the only other terms that you need to get familiar with before we dive into our growth sprint are the three growth levers from the Hacking Growth book. Now, there are more in the book, but we find that there are three in particular that work really well for our growth sprint. So the first is acquisition. This is ultimately how your customers find out about you and how you reach out to them. The second is activation. So how are you turning those prospects into paying customers? Simple as that. And finally, the third is retention. So how are you ensuring that those customers keep coming back? And we find that this is the growth lever that is mainly overlooked. People like the shiny new business. But actually, what Harvard Business School tells us is even a 5% increase in customer retention can lead to a 25 to 95% increase in your profits. So it is a pretty big deal. And finally, before we speed off into the world of growth, you need a destination. And for that, we need a sprint question that needs answering. Now, although the Google Design Sprint process focuses on product design, Form's Growth Sprint focuses on top line growth and customer lifetime value. So for the purpose of this video, our sprint question is going to be, which three to six week experiments would help you acquire, activate and retain customers? Now that's all done, let's move off into the world of sprinting. Taking what we've just learned from our growth levers, it's now time to put that into practice. 
So we want to gauge where we're at in terms of those three areas using an exercise called the boat. This is going to give you some clarity in terms of your strengths and weaknesses in each of these areas. So what's pushing us forward and what's going really well are going to be the sails in your boat. And what's holding you back and giving you drag is going to be the anchor. Now this is a together alone exercise, so do let the playlist do the talking. Now the first thing you want to do is write out each of those growth levers, so acquisition, activation and retention, and you want to stick those up at the top of your board. It should look like this. So after that, you want to each grab a stack of the yellow square post-it notes. You want to be writing down what's pushing you forward, what's going really well when it comes to acquisition, activation and retention. But it's really important that it's one idea per post-it note. And once you've written them, you need to stick them up at the top of your board underneath each of those growth levers. So pause the video here because I'm going to give you five to ten minutes to do that. Crank up your concentration playlist and do this together alone. Next, you want to take the blue post-it notes and think about what's holding you back when it comes to these three growth levers. What is it that's not going so well? These are your anchors. Again, it's one idea per post-it and you want to be putting those underneath your yellow post-it notes with a clear divide. Again, this is another Together Alone exercise and I'm going to give you five to ten minutes again to do that independently. So pause the video here. For your decider's debut. So decider, I want you to stand up and read through all of the post-it notes on your wall or your whiteboard and I want you to select the growth lever that you want to hone in on for the rest of this sprint. For the purpose of what we're going to do, we selected acquisition. Now it's time to zone into those blue post-it notes. So these are the challenges that you've identified under that growth lever. And you may say, what's the point in even doing the yellow post-it notes and looking at all of the positives? Well, this helps build confidence in the process and also allows you to spot the gaps. Okay, so next the facilitator should deduplicate all of the blue post-it notes that you're focusing on. Because it's likely that you and the team will have come up with some similar ideas. Now you're not clustering into themes here, it's purely for direct duplicates. You want to remove them from the board or just stick them directly on top. Next, you want to pick up three dots each, walk over to your board and read through all of the blue post-it notes that you're honing in on. And you want to vote on those that you think are going to have the biggest impact if you solve them. You can put multiple dots onto a post-it note, so that's totally fine. i pause the video here and give yourself a couple of minutes to cast your votes. Once everyone has placed their votes, the facilitator needs to reorder those post-it notes into essentially a big Christmas tree in order of priority. So you've done a great job so far and you're really clear on the challenges that you've got under that growth lever, but now you need to turn them into questions that we can start to answer. These are called how might we's. Now for this section, you're going to need your rectangular yellow post-it notes and facilitator, you're going to be doing the job of scribing here. Now it's really important that they literally start with the words, how might we, and they end with a question mark. So you want to take your top four or five blue post-its from your pyramid and turn them into how might we questions. Now, you'll often find that there are multiple ways that you can write a how might we question for each of your post-its and that's totally fine if you want to do multiple, no problem whatsoever. It also shouldn't be too high level. You're not trying to recreate a sprint question here. Remember that we're trying to create three to six week growth experiments. So you need to be able to complete your solution within that time frame. So pause the video here and turn your top four or five blue post-its into how might we questions. got a nice wall of challenges and how might we's, you want to get some outside inspiration. This part of the process is called the lightning demos. But before we dive into that, you want to select the how might we that you are going to focus on for the remainder of the growth sprint. It's totally fine if you want to pick the same one as someone else, as long as you've got one each, 
For any duplicates, just rewrite it out on another rectangular post-it note. Lightning demos are essentially a quick piece of research where you're trying to pull best practice and find examples that you want to show your team to act as inspiration. So you want to be logging onto the internet and having a look at all of the different sources at your fingertips. So trying blogs and case studies, published research, ideas from outside of your sector, businesses that you admire. And ultimately, you're trying to gather notes onto a page of A4 to start putting together what your lightning demo is going to be to share with your team. Now, it's really important, that, as tempting as it is, you're not jumping in to designing your solution for this how might we question. You're showing someone else's work, what someone else has done to inspire you and your team. So now you've got 20 to 30 minutes to do this. So pause the video here, crank up that concentration playlist and crack on. Now to make this more shareable with the group, you want to take all of those notes that you've just gathered and you want to turn it in to a rectangular post-it summary. You want to give it a title, explain the big idea from the research that you found and add a couple of more details just to explain the main points. So it should look something a little bit like this. So pause the video here, take five to 10 minutes to do that and then we'll present back to your team. So once everyone's done, you want to be creating a gallery. So completely clear everything from your board and just leave your lightning demo notes the how might we it relates to and the lightning demo summary post it on the boards. So then you're going to be presenting back to your group. So pause the video here and give each other two to three minutes to explain your lightning demo example. Okay, so now we're going to get into creating our growth experiments. Now a growth experiment is a three to six week effort to test a theory about something that could spur growth. Now it's not a small task and it's not a full blown project, it kind of sits somewhere in between. And the idea here is that if it's not going to work, you want to learn that quickly and cheaply. And if it is going to work and be a success, then you want to be able to scale that up. So before you dive in, you want to take a clean piece of A4 paper and start jotting down some notes from all of the lightning demos and also your initial thoughts on what a solution might look like to tackle that how might we question. So this really helps before we help you structure your growth experiment. So grab some snacks, pause the video and spend the next 10 minutes doing that. your notes let's look at what a growth experiment looks like and it's essentially a one pager with five key headings so let's look at those each in turn first of all you need to give your growth experiment a title secondly you want to explain it what is the hypothesis that you want to test the third thing you want to be looking at are what are the action steps that you're going to need to take to get it up and running then you want to focus on the success criteria Ultimately, how are you going to measure whether this has worked or not? And finally, you want to capture how long that you think this growth experiment is going to take. It's no more complicated than that, but you do want to consider a couple of key points. First, it needs to be really clear and legible. Your other team members need to be able to read this and understand your experiment without a voiceover from you. You're not going to be explaining this out loud. Second thing to remember is that three to six week sweet spot. So be realistic about what you can achieve, gear up and test in that time period. So give yourselves 20 to 30 minutes on this, pause the video here, turn on your playlist and do this together alone. So you've got all your growth experiments, but now you need a way to prioritize what you're going to do first. Realistically, you should only ever be doing two experiments at the same time. So first and foremost, facilitator, stand at your feet, get to your board and clear everything off. And you want to be hanging your growth experiments up on the board so they're really, really clear. 
Next, the rest of the team, you can join that facilitator because you want to be reading through all of the growth experiments together alone. So you're not explaining your growth experiment. So pause the video here, give yourselves five minutes to read through them silently. Now you're up to speed with what everyone has produced, everyone except the decider should take two red dots. The decider, you want to take two green dots. You want to place these as your votes on the growth experiments that you think are gonna have the most impact on your business's growth. So pause the video here a moment while you cast your votes. Voted, the facilitator should organize your growth experiments into a Christmas tree with your most highly voted growth experiments going on top. And this means you can really clearly see the experiment, the group thing, is going to have the most impact on your business's growth. But we also need to think about effort. So now we're going to draw out an effort impact matrix. Facilitators, this is a job for you. It should look a little something like this. We'll pause the video here to just give you a moment to draw that out. Next, you need to grab a stack of the blue post-it notes and you want to transfer the name of each growth experiment onto an individual post-it. You also want to place green dots on the post-it notes that had decider votes from earlier. Okay, so now beginning with the top voted growth experiment, you want to place that post-it on your effort impact matrix. And don't overthink it, because essentially wherever you place this post-it will act as a comparison for all of the others. So then take each other in turn, and then it becomes a question of, is it more or less impact, or more or less effort? The facilitator should be leading this up at the board, but you're more than welcome to have this as a discussion. So pause the video here and take 10 minutes to plot each in turn. Now you've mapped all of your growth experiments on the matrix, you can start to think about which ones you're going to do first, rather than just basing this on someone's favorite. This is an easy way to think about it. Those that are in the top left of your matrix, you want to be tackling those first because they're maximum impact and quite low effort. Those that are in top right, you probably want to be creating a project because they probably sit outside of that three to six week sweet spot. Anything bottom left, really that's a task. It can probably just go on your to-do list and get done. And anything bottom right, frankly, bin that for now. If it's taking loads of effort and really not giving you much return, you don't want to be worrying yourself with it. So that's it. You've identified some key problems, you've turned them into how might we questions, you've done some research to inform some solutions, then you've structured that into your growth experiments. And now you prioritise what you're going to get started with to go and test. But it really is all about execution. All of this is a complete waste of time if you don't act on it. So don't leave the room until you've done three things. Number one, make sure you assign an owner to the two growth experiments you've decided to start first. And make sure you're really clear on the actions that are needed to get them up and running within a week. Number two, get a date in the diary to review your growth experiments because regardless of failure or success, you want to be celebrating their completion because this is all about encouraging a habit of testing ideas that could spur growth. And finally, make sure you get another date in the diary to run your next growth sprint. This is about layering up and iterating what you're doing. So create more growth experiments and get those dates in the diary and feel free to use this video to help you along.